Okay, today we're going to work on a leather saddle tree for western saddles. And um, I've got two different kinds. I've got a clay one and a leather one, and we're going to do the leather one today. Um, it's a one sheet pattern, and I'll show you where you can get this. Um, simple um, materials, that, things that you would use for your saddle. You might already have already if you do a lot of tack making. Um, first thing I always do is cut my pieces um, out, but not pieces, I'm sorry, the squares from my pieces out. And um, so you'd end up with um, this this mini show on it. So there's there's four different things. Um, this here, which says uh, Kip or Skyver, one to two ounce leather, we're going to uh, put that aside. This would be made out of your finished leather the leather that you would use for your actual western saddle. And you would have these same exact pieces or something similar in your saddle pattern. And these are options that I'm providing that, that I like, and I'll show you how to do those. Um, there's, um, I'm gonna need a little bit of aluminum foil, and we'll start with that. This is, um, this is support um, and structure. It's, we're not using a lot of it. It's, I use aluminum can because it's cheap. You know, just get your favorite beverage. And I also use what's called, I call the glue stick method. So I um, flip it over. I put my glue stick all over it. And then just find a place on the aluminum can. Go. This is just one of my favorite beverages, one of them, I have a few. And go ahead and stick it on there. And then, just to make it easier, I'm going to cut out that pattern piece. Okay, so there's that. And it's um, kind of like the glue that you get. It doesn't necessarily, it's a permanent stick. It's just... Hold it in place until you can, um, you know, and you, until you can get it cut out. It's just easier that way. I'll put that aside for now. Um, this piece here, now I'll, I say Skyver is is what you should use, and Skyver is a is a really thin leather. It's almost a. In this here, you can see there are places where this is almost transparent all the way through, right? It's it's super thin leather it's not necessarily easy to find um but that would be the preferred uh, strength and stretch and everything that i i would suggest for this piece however um if you don't have that you can use like a non uh like a well an interfacing for dresses you could like a black interfacing or something um something that uh is doesn't ravel um, and it's strong and it doesn't have to be expensive, but I find that like a fusible or non-fusible interface for, for dresses works. Um, the whole idea is to get something that doesn't, uh, doesn't ravel. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. These end pieces are not real pretty, so I'm going to go ahead and use doesn't even have to be of any particular color. These uh, pieces, these first pieces, the non-finished ones, for the most part won't be seen. So if you don't, you know, um, you don't have to fret about what color they are. I mean, be red, black, brown. In the case of these, see what I'm, so this stuff is like really nasty and I'd probably never use that for anything. So I'm gonna throw that away. But. Here, all right, there's that. Put that aside. All right, so the next pieces are the, the true structure, and um, most everybody, if you do two, three ounce, you, you end up with scraps and um, it, for your saddles, right? And <laughs> not very pretty pieces. So these would be made out of that because they don't have to be pretty. They can have flaws in them. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna care. Now what I do for these, I usually do them out of scrap. Um, I don't have any scrap today. 
at least not small scrap pieces. I have some, give you an idea of different things you can use. Now, the thickness of the leather is going to be critical for this. Um, and um, I have done, this is, a, this is my two, three ounce tooling leather, right? It's a piece of that. Um, this one's got some nasty flaws on it, but this, you know. So, and I buy whole skin, so I'll end up with whole pieces that, that are just, you know, I don't know how well that would die. So this goes into my scrap pile. And this is what, you know, I can use to make these. Um, in some places it's just nasty stuff. Um, the other uh, thing is this is another piece of tooling leather. Also has been, you know, badly scarred and it's pretty nasty. And I would use that. Um, the thing is, if you notice, there's a huge difference in the thickness. I see I can't get a good, good look at the edge there. So um, the um, the thicker stuff here, um, I think these are both supposed to be rated uh, two, three ounce. They don't look like it. This looks like more of a three, four. Um, but um, it, it makes a difference. Um, if you're going to do, if you're going to modify it and do like, a uh, cholo saddle maybe um, you'd want a thicker uh, piece for for part of it but I'm gonna do the easier uh, thinner stuff because if you get it too thick it actually does affect the third dimension and I'll have to show you that so we'll use this stuff and um, it can be dyed not dyed I've, I've done the whole tree I assembled the whole tree and then dipped, dumped it in dye and that that worked too um, this piece here needs to be on a f the front, all right? Um, and the reason for that is we're going to be putting the um, these um, lines here, these uh, scoring lines. And so they go on the front like that. And again, this is with my glue stick. And this is the only piece that really should go on the front, and just so you get those scoring lines right. And the scoring lines will give it the right bend. Okay, so let's go ahead and oh, I'm even using my leather scissors. Let's see what this is. Oh, I'll get my leather scissors out later. <laughs> okay, these are my leather scissors. that piece. Put that aside. And go ahead and flip it over. And um, now we've got um, these are the riser and seat pieces for the seat itself. So let's see where I can put that. exactly what I'm doing so on occasion I bump it and then I also forget that it's I move it out of the way so that I can see what I'm doing all right so I'll go ahead and, and it doesn't have to be straight I'm just trying to get the the bulk of the leather off of it it's easier to maneuver if you don't have that I know it's, it's not competition or anything that says you gotta keep all that stuff on there so so now you can piecework this if you want I mean um, sometimes on these pieces it's easier to not be so close to each other so I can probably fit that right there That's why it's nice to have the scrap. You know, you could even use smaller pieces. I this this is just what I had. And then um, this was left over from that other. Let's see if we can probably fit. That one in there. Yeah, 
this is what we do to try to make our hobby affordable. Don't like to leave little pieces unused. So I'll just go ahead and put you right there. And then, okay, and then this piece, I'm gonna get rid of some of that paper. And um, looks like that'll fit right about. Gotta be careful of that. Okay, it'll fit right about there. This is what I think of when I tell people that I make, you know, scrap leather saddles, is when I can completely piece it from smaller pieces that were left over from other projects, but. I got that. Okay. There we go. So those are the pieces cut out. And I'm not going to make you watch me cut these out entirely. I mean, some of these are a little bit more difficult than others, but um, these are pretty straightforward. Um, I forgot to mention on the um, aluminum can, you want to go with the curve. So if you notice, there's a nice curve and that helps to shape the seat. So don't fight the curve. Go ahead and use the curve following that curve line. Um, so, and those, this is pretty easy to cut out. Um, so I'm gonna do some cutting out of these pieces just to get all the, the leather off and then I'll be back and showing you the, um, the details that need to be done, okay? Okay, I'm back and I've got my pieces pretty much cut out. Um, then I'll show you the, some of these you can remove the paper now. Um, don't necessarily need it and then others we still have work to do on it uh, to get the th third dimension um, and that's what we're doing is a, a 3d leather sculpture that eventually looks something like uh, like this one here here's one I was practicing um, before I did this just to make sure I remembered how to do the pattern um, okay so we'll go ahead and um, uh, on the aluminum, I never take the paper off. I, there's, uh, it it kind of helps it to glue if you leave the paper on because uh, I use white glue and that isn't, um, it just sticks better. Um, and then um, this is your uh, seat cover. And if you see, if you're really careful, you'll see how it you can take the paper off and it doesn't um, ruin the pattern. Um, Let's see, the only thing I don't want to uh, peel off yet is this one here, so we'll just go, um, oh, and this one, um, sometimes it's hard to get that horn out, so we'll, um, I'll show you how to do those, uh, but for the most part, uh, paper just peels right off, um, you just find a, a corner, and um, make sure you throw away the paper and not the pattern, I've done that before, kind of embarrassing to admit, but yeah, I've done that before. And um, that should be pretty quick. I want you to see this is actually a pretty quick pattern. It's um, so it, I make one for every saddle. I, it's just part of my saddle making process now. Um, I used to make clay trees, and I'd have to make those, you know, ahead of time, and because of the oven and everything, and just have some on hand. And this here is um, just gives me more flexibility. I make one at a time so I'm not storing anything and then there's issues with the clay. I may do a video on the clay trees. I don't even sell that book anymore but it is in some of my other books. If you want the clay tree it's in my Roper and also in my um, pleasure saddle books. All right so then we're going to get a cutting surface up and um, I just have a wood board. Um, looks like this. Looks like it's been used a lot. I just want to make sure I don't, um, well, my blade will last longer if it does hit the marble that's below. And, um, and also, if I'm working on a desk, I don't want to shave my desk up. So the first thing is um, these score lines. Now what this is going to do, see right now it's not a very clean bend. And it's going to bend like that. And I want it to want to bend, right? So I'm only going to go about halfway through here. All right, it's not much of a score. It's just enough that... Now I'm keeping that, that piece, see how it's going to bend easier, and um, I can even, you know, almost even force it to hold a shape just by scoring it. Alright, now these here, um, 
I have a new Western saddle pattern. No, I haven't written the book yet. I don't have a lot of time to write. Writing takes a lot of time, a lot more time than a video. Um, and in the new saddle pattern, um, it's adjustable fenders, adjustable uh, leather stirrups. And um, so this is for that. And if I'm you know, gonna make this, I'm gonna go ahead and make it for my new saddle pattern. And if I can find the time, summer's gonna be tough because kids got a lot of stuff going on this summer. Um, Man, when he's home, he likes to be in here making noise. And he's uh, he's 16, so that hasn't changed. Uh, his whole life, that's that's his thing. So I just pretty much um, plan on not getting stuff done when he's home over the summer. Um, or I'm off with him doing whatever it is he needs to do this summer. So let's see. If you notice. Okay, so this is a, um, a number 25 blade. With the associate hammer, this says it's a uh, handle. Um, this says it's a four, so a four handle with a 25 blade. Um, it's a scalpel. Um, I just, I like the scalpel. I like the flat handle, um, especially when I'm doing skiving. And I'll show you that. There are pieces that need to be skived. And um, this is a good thing to practice your skiving on because there's lots of curves and angles and all sorts of things. So I'll just work that off. So there's there's that, okay, and um, so you get further on, you'll see that that's that's the about what we're looking for, that type of curve. Now, um, a couple of things I'm I'm using the um, the smaller inside line. This here is more for pleasure, and as you get better at making the trees, you can make this narrower. Um, the, the gullet, I'm sorry, you can make this wider. The gullet can be wider. I'm going to go for the uh, more of a, a working saddle type. It's going to have a narrow, uh, narrow, narrower gullet. Um, the thing is, um, this is supposed to fit withers. And if you notice, bear horses, most of them don't have any withers, very little withers. I mean, you, they'd all be comfortable to ride because they don't have that ridge right there. At least bareback. I used to ride bareback all the time, so. But um, this horn can be tough to get with a pair of scissors, so I tried to get what I could with the scissors, and then I'm going to try and cut out the rest with a knife. And um, I call this a knife. I guess it's a knife. And you want to be careful. Now, you don't have to have a perfect... Uh, round horn because the aluminum post is actually going to be your shape. This is just filler. So if you turn it over and you're, you're, this isn't perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's the, um, the aluminum's the shape. And that'll give a hint to those of you who like to modify patterns to get the cell of your dreams. That one turned out pretty good. Alright, so now we can move the paper on that. Um, anyways, if you're um, trying to make a saddle, um, this you can modify but it's you actually want to modify this and so like if it was going to be a cholo you could make this a super big you know horn and then make sure this is matching for the filler or make filler pieces so there you go for the advanced users who like to make your own all right so i'm going to go back to to this piece because it's got the paper now i rarely will tell you to put the glue stick on the um, right side of uh, of leather because it um, it will ruin, absolutely ruin the finish and make it impossible to um, dye smoothly. And it also doesn't like to come off. So here's kind of what happens. I don't know if you can see how it peels off a layer of the, um, the actual leather. So never do this if it's, if it's going to show. And... Um, if it's important to do it, which for my tooling patterns, I do put it on the right side, but I soak it off. I soak it off and I thoroughly wash um, the glue off the front when it's really wet. So in this case here, let's see if the glue will come off. Sometimes the paper gets really picky and it has to, the glue has to dry almost all the way. And yeah, stick glue actually does take a while to dry. So, 
So the longer this paper sits on here, the easier it is to, to pull off. All right. Well, the good news is, because this is on going to be covered up by leather, is that it doesn't. It just doesn't really matter. And um, you know, we're gonna. If you really want to, you can kind of see if you can skive it off. I didn't really want it on the edges. Skive that off a little bit. So. Um, not that it'll show, because it won't show. We're gonna have a, you'll have the tree skirt will be, be layers of fabric or layers of leather between here and there. Um, but um, I do want to kind of thin uh, the edges. And I don't know how well you can see this. It's gonna be camera okay, right there. Can, um, just thin it a little bit around the edges. Um, this is just. Some leather sky is easier than others. This is that soft, icky stuff that usually is found on the outside of skin. Just it's not a, it's why it was in the script pile. Oh, I think I might need a new blade. It's almost one blade of saddle is what I found. Let's see how well this works. I, I lift uh, stuff out of the way instead of trying to fight I'll just lift it out of the way so I can get flatter huts experience and um, I want to use the edge of the board to my advantage um, and this is where having the flat handle for me works really good alright so there you go took some of my board with me so now that's skived um, on these pieces, because now we're working on that third dimension. So on these pieces, which is your, your pommel horn, right? Um, we need to narrow the gullet pieces. So we, we're trying to match, um, this is a cover, right? A uh, seat cover, so there's your seat, there's your jockeys, and then you put your suede on here, right? Or not, I mean, you could, this pattern's really cool, you could actually tool your seat. Um, but we need to, this area right in here, okay, we have to make sure it's thin enough. That's the third dimension we're trying to match. So all three of these, plus whatever leather you're going to use to cover it, has to, um, the thickness has to match right in there. And that's why sometimes using, that's why I'm using the thinner stuff here, because I want to match that gullet. Now the Rio Rondo pattern, which this works for, um, is a little bit easier because um, they don't do the full piece, so you got a little bit more flexibility with that pattern. Um, um, I've got my own, so, and I like mine. All right, so I'm doing little wedges, all right? So I'm just thinning it right in here, and that's about where, you know, um, if I stood this up, you'd see that this is going to fit right in here, right? So I'm trying to thin this area right here that's going to fit in here. You see that? So right about there. It's right about oh, right where the curve starts going downward. And I'm going to do that for all three of these. Um, on this piece here, I like to just thin this a little bit. Um, just a little bit, and I think that was a little long. I think I left it long, but well, we can clip it. Um, it just has the horn go more to a point. It's wider at the bottom and the thick, um, thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. And then this, and that, and so there you can see it's a wedge now. So it's thicker up here, and then it thins significantly downward. That's what we're looking for. Alright, now this is your seat base pieces. There's three of them. And these we're trying to make the curve. So we're trying to lift up in the front, narrow at the back. So when it sits on your seat, like this, um, this ends up higher, but you want it to um, like blend downward. Right, so I want it narrow back here and I want it to blend there. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to sky right along the edge there. 
And again, it's kind of going for a wedge. Skype it down. And then this piece here, we're gonna thin that out. I need a blade. That one's not. Let's see. Sharp anymore. This here is a number 11 blade. That's a 11 blade. And this here says it's a three handle. And um, I also like this. Um, this blade is not very strong. It's good for skiving. It's not good for tip work, which is why I started with the 25. Um, but you can see when you have a sharp blade, it does make a difference. <laughs> My 25 is done. All right. Um, that's that seed piece. Then we have our, um, yeah, whatever. So now these are um, go underneath and um, these, if you notice, they match here, right? Well, if I skived here and here, then I also need to skive here and here, all right? Because we're trying to blend that. We're trying to lift the top center and uh, not have bulk in the back or the um, sides. And this is one for either side. Okay, finally, the piece is, this is your seat, okay? And if you're gonna put a cantle or something back here after all the layers that we're gonna add to this, we really need to thin this out because it's gonna be way too thick. So I'm gonna do my best here. Bring that almost all the way down to, see, I think that's a way so you can see the difference in the thickness. So I'm taking a good chunk off. I'm not going to get rid of the front though. That's, that's why this is a good, this is a good pattern of practice you're skiving on. First of all, using scrap leather. Uh, second of all, if you make a mistake, it's gonna get covered up anyways. And so, you might as well practice your skiving on this. Alright, so I got it all the way around. Okay, now nice and thin. Perfect. Okay, so we should be done with our cutting board. I'm gonna try and get rid of this skiving mess. And um, I have this. This is a cigar holder, and it's absolutely perfect for my blades. Okay, just thought you'd like to. Share that little piece. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start our assembly. And um, there's really uh, this is one set, right? Um, no, not that. Yeah, that is. That's one set. Okay. And then there's our pommel set, and then there's our seat set. So we've got three things we can work on, and I'm going to rotate, and that allows my glue a chance to dry. So we can start with start with putting the aluminum onto the seat. All right, so we're going to match the bottom because I want to keep. Oh, and we're going to use regular glue. I like white glue. Regular white glue. Okay, so we're going to start with the seat. And we're going to put the uh, aluminum here, and we're going to match the bottom, okay? And um, show you how that works. I use white glue. This is my white glue. And I have a really tiny hole, so let's see. There we go. So we're going to do, we may have to do. Try to keep it upside down all the time so I use this spool which is perfect it was a spool for um, you know leather lace and then I like to leave it like this so it's always up and it wasn't so it's my fault and it was a little clogged which is also my fault but and I'm gonna have to do some major repair on this Tip. Come on. Uh, it's not the way it should work. But when you have a um, 
small hole that does get clogged. That's good enough. And then, because I can't use the tip right now with my glue thing to do that, I'm gonna here. I'm gonna go ahead and spread it with my. This is not a good showing from my glue today. All right. Just get that spread really well. Glue spreaders can be um, anything: toothpick, piece of wire, or does it matter? All right, so now I'm going to put this on here. And because I want to get the best contact possible, I'm going to go ahead and use clips. You can use whatever clips you like. Um, Melody Snow, the Unicorn Woman, turned me on to these for braiding. And I can't braid, but um, I may do three strand, but I just could not get my brain around the others. I never practiced. That's really my fault. She, she's a great, she's a good teacher. Maybe one day I'll go back and try. I oh, barely have enough time to do what I got now. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and hold that in place. So I said we're going to do this in two pieces. Um, all right, the next is that we're going to take these three pieces and we'll go ahead and glue them uh, where they belong along here. Oh, see, now you're cooperating. That's what I like. So with a tiny hole in that nozzle and the um, fact that it's upside down, it's um, it's flowing exactly the way I like it. So I don't have to keep getting my, I don't have to use a glue spreader, it's perfect. Okay, and then, yeah, and none of those strings that you get with gel glue. Okay, so this is um, matching front the very front, and then uh, this angle right here. So that's the square we're trying to match. Um, you know, a lot of times I design it specifically to make it easy to assemble, where you don't actually, you know, like we actually don't need these. We could do, you know, that, but um, I actually, I like it, but it also makes it easier to keep the match there. Um, and we want this to be round, which is why we're not scoring it, because that's where, you know, your legs would be there. You don't want it to be square, you want it to be round. All right, that one's put aside. Now let's do do a couple steps on this. Um, the first thing we want is we're going to do our horn support. And these three are going to be glued together. So they can go right side, wrong side. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, sometimes you get uh, used to, you know, right side to right side, right side to wrong side. And then you have this third one and you're like, what do I do with that? Um, so it doesn't matter. It's going to be covered anyways. Um, the first thing I want to do is... Uh, my horn support and I want to glue that onto here at least that's the way I'm going to do it you could do it this way if you want to do it wrong side doesn't matter I happen to like the smooth side out I don't know why it doesn't make a difference it's going to be covered up with other leather anyways I think it's just a I think it's just psychological all right so we'll go ahead and match that so that these um, little tabs are right above uh, where the pommel starts. I'll flip it around so you can see that. And then of course the horn is in its space. And we're gonna secure this in place by pulling this up. See, pull that up. And then we're gonna pull this around. See that? And it's okay if it's a little bit narrower at the bottom. Okay, I mean it, uh, at the top, thicker at the bottom, narrower at the top. So there you go. That's pretty simple. We don't have to wait for any glue to dry. We're going to take this piece now and I'll do it uh, wrong side to wrong side. I'm going to hold it by the horn because the horn gets no glue. Everything else gets glue. And we really 
they want to match the top. That's what matters. So let's match the roundness of the top. Make sure it matches all the way around so it looks like it's just one continuous thickness of leather. At least as much as possible. Okay. So should match all the way around. And then And then we're going to glue this piece right on the front. And this is us just working on the third dimension of this sculpture. It's a saddle tree sculpture. So, there you go. Yeah, I sculpt. in leather, so you can tell your friends, right? Alright, so here's kind of what it looks like from the side. Now we'll let the glue dry, but um, you'll be able to push this horn uh, down. Don't want to do too much. And then it will give you that nice, because it's never 90 degrees, right? It's got that little bit of an angle, and this should give you that perfect angle you're looking for. Alright, that's actually done. Okay, let's see how our seat is doing. Yeah, I got some healthy doses of glue on that one, didn't I? Okay, and so we're gonna pull off some of this extra glue. Not really required, but I don't like lumps. Okay, and now we're gonna take this, and the the, the idea here. Let's see how this is gonna work. So. We match the tips down here, and then when it's glued on, there should be a lip that matches all the way around the top. All right, so it covers, if you notice here, the seat. It's intentional to have a little bit of uh, leather here that you can glue to, okay? And that's what we're trying to do. So we're trying to make it so it matches all the way around in the back. Um, you can put the glue on the skiver or you can put the glue on the seat, doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes um, I do it either way. Today I think I'll go. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold this. Yeah, hold that tip. Let's see how it works if it's on the seat. Um, you notice the paper stays on really good on the aluminum. I just, it also depends on what kind of glue stick. I've used a lot of different glue sticks, and um, there's some that I can say are really bad, like sticky note glue. Don't use that stuff. It's not meant to stick. All right. Um, but I've used Elmer's and or some of the others. I don't remember what I'm using right now. I just grabbed it. All right, so grab like a 20 pack or something and we're gonna so white glue gives you warp time which I like better than gel glues gel glues are almost immediate or white glue gives me a chance to move things around get them the way I want them because it's not it's like a five second setup gel glue is like a two second setup and um Freedom. Oh, I don't think that's not going to show. Man, if that was a suede seat, this would be done. Alright, so that's what it looks like on the front. That's what it looks like on the back. And that one's done. Put that aside. Alright, so next is the, um, we're going to put our front on. Alright, now this is the essential shape, so we got to be real. I'm happy with it. All right. Um, I go ahead and put glue all the way. I don't need to do it here, but uh, edges and then along here. Because we're gluing along here, here, down the tip, up, and then down. We're gluing around these uh, 
openings. You don't have to make those. Um, I plan on using this for a saddle, so I'm going to. So I'm going to hold it by the very tip. And then I'm going to support it with my other finger. And I don't know if you can see that. See that? See where that glue is? And the cool thing about white glue, it shows up in the pictures. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this over and I'll bend this because I'm trying to get this front uh, right there first and straight back. Okay, so it's symmetrical. And then we're going to have to hold that and then bend as we put this on. Come on, baby. Behave. I'm going to keep our tip where it's supposed to be. And then you might want to do this in two stages. Get the tip glued down first and then try glue down the arms. Now you will find that this happens all the time. Okay. That the center pieces, the more you get the bend here, the um, these will come off and not be flush, and that's okay. You can cut those if you want. What we're trying to do is get that it should be flat here, but curved overall. All right, and um, I just work it and then this is very cooperative leather it's doing pretty good and we can get that bend but I still have my flat back here good leather love it okay so now you're looking at saying hey you are starting to get that third dimension see and because it's flexible it means it'll fit more models it's not rigid, so you can get it to fit tighter and closer, get more close contact. Oh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, I might want to cut some of that off, but that's fine. Okay, now, last piece, or kind of last piece, you have, we're going to put this on here. Okay, and it should be pretty obvious how that fits, because I designed it specifically so you wouldn't have to guess. Okay. Your little uh, openings for your stirrup leathers are there in that section, but let me show you a trick. You're only going to put the glue in here. We need to, the seat to rise up, okay? We need that to rise up. So we're not going to glue the seat, but we're going to glue everywhere else. And we want to glue right in here. See this? So we've got this like edge in here. We want to make sure we get a good amount of glue in there. And then the rest of this is just to hold it in place. And the trick is to get symmetry. So no rush. We're trying to get symmetry with this piece. Yeah, I've got glue all over my tongue. Alright, so my working surface, when I'm doing this and I'm just matching up here on the front, my working surface is just a piece of marble that I bought at a DIY store. Um, helps to keep the glue and everything off of my desk. Protects my work surface. It's nice and hard for tooling. It's perfect. Alright, so now we're working on that third dimension. See how I've got everything matched up? And not necessarily symmetrical, so let's try. And that's critical. So there we go. And now we're going to push down our seat. You can push it uh, like trying to get symmetrical. And you can work it later too, but the important thing is to get this so that the seat comes up right at the end. And we've left this extra for your uh, jockeys, uh, your rear, I don't know, called jockeys, I guess. These are the jockeys, but anyways, that nice decorative um, piece that you piece right there. 
but we don't want it to be real thick and that's why we scarved it. But now if you look, you have a seat. Okay, that's what it looks like. And what's interesting is the more you pull it this way, the more that wants to come up. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Whee! Having that little bit of aluminum helps keep your, your shape. And is that symmetrical? I could probably play with it once the glue dries and get the uh, both sides to face forward the same amount. The, um, the addition of, um, I mean, for my piece it would be this, but the addition of this, oh, by the way, the cancel pieces on here, I just didn't sky it, and it would like fold over the edge of this. But anyways, um, if you notice, it'll hide up quite a bit, right? So that's, you know, ultimately what it would do. And, and so we just want to be able to hold up. Can you see it? So the seat would hold that up. And um, that would be part of the assembly is getting those two pieces to like each other. And then for me, this is the Cheyenne roll, okay? So I just didn't score it. And it would come down and I'd cover it so it would look like it was... You know, yeah, just with, anyways, that's what my new pattern looks like. Um, all right, now, uh, so Real Rondo has a two-piece, and, and I understand the concept of the two-piece um, for covering this, right? Um, but once the two-piece is done, I, I want to be able to have a one-piece because it's so much easier to create a saddle with one-piece. So this is both, okay? Your next step, and I'm not going to do that today, your next step would be to cover this based on whatever your pattern is, all right? And um, you might want to, depending upon what you're using, maybe you want to go ahead and, and round these edges a little bit with a knife or something. But I'll save that for next time, okay? I'll show you what you can do with this using um, these finished pieces. Uh, there should, there's a couple of options here. Um, and then once you have uh, that finished, you glue it on, and then you have your one piece to do the rest of your saddle assembly, okay? And this is kind of what it would look like. So this is, didn't come out as well as I wanted, so I didn't really want to show it to you, but so this is one of the ways to finish it. Um, nice, robust, working saddle type. Um, and, um, and then you end up with a one piece to start doing your actual saddle assembly. So next time we'll work on uh, this, the beginnings of making a Western saddle.